I like that beanie that Clef has on. And this will go out of the end zone. Another sky kick out the back. You guys got playbooks? How, how prepared are you guys? Well, well I'll tell you, <laughs> Clef the God, Patriots offense, and he's going to run some pat sales and all that kind of good stuff. Sure. Defense, on the other hand, we got New York Giants. Well, that's pretty much the matter right now. Yeah, it should be very interesting to see. This first drive is always important, I think, when you watch these games at setting the tone. I was talking with RG yesterday about how important it is to set the tone and not get off on the wrong foot, get down the field, get some sort of points, and kick a little bit of that pressure off yourself. All right, here we go. First and 10. Clef's going to have it first. Representing the Buccaneers. And he's polarizing. And I mean that in a good way. Immediately flipping that gun bunch right there, trying to mess with Manu's defensive adjustments. Vic swings it out to Sharp. Get off of me! And he'll carry another two for the first down. Love that first throw. Real easy read right off the bat, finding Sharp in the flat. Now we're going to see if, if he can push it down the field against this defense that's going to be going after some turnovers. A very popular option for these players. Go underneath the Shannon Sharp and try to truck a defender. So first and 10 now for Clef. And he's going to have some room to run with Vic. Ooh, got to be careful there. But he's going to move the chains again. I'll tell you what, Clef, he gets risky with Michael Vic. We saw in overtime, he had a spin move in overtime where you think, oh, you would definitely try to slide in that situation play conservative. No, Clef is here to ball. Yeah, he takes a lot of chances, but for some reason, they always work out. Vic, so much time here for Clef. And he'll check it down to Sharp. And he'll truck his way to the 50. All the time in the pocket. If you give him too much time, it's not going to be a seven-yard pickup. You're going to be looking at more 20, 25, 30-yard pickups down the field. Got to create some pressure. That was Clef's D read on the play. He looked at his A read wasn't there, B read wasn't there, C wasn't even there either. But Shannon Sharp was just chilling underneath the whole time, and Clef knew that. And once time finally ran out, he went to Sharp, got a slight little gain of three yards. That's the voice of Cookie Boy. We also got Nick from Madden Bomber League, part of the Shoutcaster Showdown. And it's and a throw. pick by Manu. Contra said in the chat, Manu has no chance. Well, there's a pick. I think he has something to say about that. A crucial mistake to start out with. You can't make that read, but how about the defensive play? What a lurk there. Get jumping in front of the receiver and giving yourself a big opportunity to start out with the lead. I've been waiting also a tournament to say this. Do not put your hands in the cookie jar. Jamal Adams lurking in the middle of the field. And you see a lot of these players using Jamal Adams because he is one of the fastest players. I believe 95 speed on that team of the year card. But both these guys, you can't sleep on either. I think this is going to be an incredible game here in the NFC South between the Buccaneers and the Panthers. They're going to see who's going to face the defending champ goes in the next round. First and 10 at the 44. Manu's in this trips tight end. This is his formation. This is his bread and butter. This is what he's been using the last two years to become the back-to-back -back Panthers Club champion. Got Fournette in the backfield. He's going to go to the air here. Quick throw to the flats. Sharp. There we you go. See the again. meta right there. <laughs> there it is. Shannon Sharp underneath trying to truck that defender. You saw some guys even had Energizer on there to try to get that truck go upfield. Only got one yard, though. Second and nine. After the interception, he's got it at the 46 yard line. Manu finds Moss. And he's just dinking and dunking, but that's what you got to do, Nick. Yeah, very conservative to start this game, especially considering you got the ball off a turnover. You don't want to give up that extra possession. Look for maybe to take a shot here, though, on third and four, especially after two dump downs early. Clef got stuck on the defensive lineman right there, and he almost made a lurk right there. That would have been pretty funny if he did it. Well, Goes has already done that twice this week. At the 49, he's going to get in plus territory. There's the first down with Julio Jones. Beautiful pickup, absolutely beautiful. Taking what the defense gives you. Uh, one thing I'm interested to look at with Manu, he uh, won his first round game 24 to seven, coming off the blowout. If it gets tight, where does the, uh, does he feel comfortable in that sort of game? So here's a motion by Moss. They'll go to the right side. Able to pick up Middle. the blitz, steps uh -oh. and throws! 
And Julio will haul it in at the 16. He's four for four, and he's in the red zone. Julio Jones? If it's not Randy Moss, Julio Jones seems to be the next best aggressive catch wide receiver to use. High pass middle of the field. Julio Jones making a one-handed catch. Vic, clean pocket here. High point. And that's one of those ones where I'm not sure you got a high point. How many guys do you think coming up over the next week will be running those hitch high points? Oh, yeah. I feel like everybody's going to be running this. You go on weekend league, everybody's going to be doing that. Five-yard high points time and time again. I think I'll take the next couple weekends <laughs> <laughs> Second and three. Now down at the nine with 2.02 to go. Clef got it first. But Manu able to get a pick. And now he's on his opening drive. Very promising. Got to get points. Formation. Interesting decision here. Second down three. I like it. He'll hand it off to Sharp. And I think he's trying to get a new set of downs. And he will have first to go for the three. And here's the hurry up, gentlemen. Trying to punch it in. Catch the defense off guard. Great timeout. <laughs> I love that call. For sure. Clef wasn't even prepared for a goal line in the first place, it seemed like. And Manu knew that. Ran hurry up. He was probably going to hit him with that fullback dive again. Let's see if Manu still comes out in that goal line offense. Can't take those timeouts with you. And he does. I bet he goes right back to Shannon Sharp. Needs three, oh. tosses it to the outside, gets a block, Ooh. but can't get in there by Fournette. It'd be second and goal from the one. Leonard Fournette, a bowling ball, gets stood up at the one yard line. What a defensive play. Unfortunately, you got a couple more downs you have to deal with. Boy, he's chewing up this clock as well. Only 90 seconds to go in the first. He's going to go to the air, a high point. Can't hang on. That is something Manu did in his round of 32 game. Out of goal line, he ran a play action pass. You really do not see that. But Manu did that, and Clef might have been ready for that. So now we got a third and goal. I think it's at the half. He'll toss it out again. This time doesn't oh, get a block. Balls and out. He fumbles. That wow. was huge. Absolutely monumental. Fun fact, Clef uh, is actually, he's a high school running backs coach. You think he was prepared for some of those runs coming down inside the one-yard line? Hey, he would, he would be telling his boys to cover up. The pitch, high risk, high reward. Not only did he not get into the end zone, not even close, he fumbles the ball as well. Oh, no. Uh oh Uh-oh. Uh -oh. It's going to be at the half-yard line coming out of the end zone. Second and 14. That was nearly two. Generous. That was a little bit of a generous spot. A little fortunate not to be giving up two points and having to punt that ball away. There is no way Clef will run the ball here. He's got to pass get out this end zone. Vic, get it to Sharp. He'll use the truck, and he'll get the first down. Get out of my way. Shannon Sharp lowering the shoulder. Picks up a first down after starting inside that one-yard line. Shannon Sharp is undisputed against some of these underneath defensive backs. And that's the thing. Shannon Sharp... Maybe he won't be able to truck a linebacker, but in the flats, he's normally got a matchup against a defensive back, and he's got the strength to knock him over. Bunch to the left. We've had two turnovers. No points yet. Clef all day, and Amari will drop it. Defense sort of the story early in this game, not just by the turnovers, but really only one play passed about 10 yards down the field. Be interested to see how that develops as we go forward, if there's going to be more shots or if we're just going to see more turnovers. Well, I got to give a huge shout out to the Twitch chat these last three days. Awesome. The Madden community has come out strong for this club championship. And there Whoop. is Ricky Williams will spin to the 19. And so now he's going to have third and six to go. Manu tried to send the heat right there. Clef was ready. Quick route out the backfield to Ricky Williams. And it looks like Manu's trying to stack that line again. And we'll see if that incredible defense by Manu can clutch up here on third down. Little playmaker to the right. He will throw it there. And Randy will move the chains. And a lot of people may be playing online. You see the playmaker. A lot of times it's pushing it down the field. Right there you saw playmaker being used more underneath, just creating some open space and picking up the first down. All right, at the end of one, we're just donuts to donuts. We've had some turnovers. We've had some big hits. But Clef the God is on his second drive. And, boy, I mean, Manu should have had a field goal. Then maybe he should have had a safety. And somehow Clef escapes both of them.
It's about who really opens up this field first. We've seen just underneath routes so far. Shannon Sharp's been the star of the show, but we all know Randy Moss is itching to get into the action. A little roll out by Vic. Pass There's up. a wide open pass to Tyreek Hill. There we go. There Too we go. Much speed down the field. If you got Tyreek Hill on a crossing route, it is so tough to defend. It's going to be interesting to see if uh, if Tyreek Hill gets involved underneath it all, if he's going to be solely that deep threat. So first and 10 at the 43. Bunch to the right now. And he'll flip the script. This is where he threw an interception last time. Gotten plus territory. Oh, my. There's a sack. Listen, the Madden gods do not like when you mess with them. Clef is going to have to be careful with Michael Vick. Oh, my. That was a sack and nearly a fumble. Second and 15. And oh, he throws throw. another Pickens for the second time. That's a lurk Let's by Sean Taylor. You can't cry over spilt milk. You can't look back and dwell on your mistakes. But, man, what could have been this half? Too many turnovers. The battle is being won on the defensive side of the ball. Well, that's not open. Not bird box, Stevie, whatever you want to call it. Do not put You're your in the <laughs> white uniforms, Clef. <laughs> That's two user picks for Manu already. Well, Clef's very tough on defense. I think that's why a lot of these top players in the game of Madden want to practice and lab with them because they know they're going to get really tough game. It's just this is where all those hours of practice come in. And even these guys sitting here in Redwood City, they're practicing in the back. They're practicing at night. They're trying to get as many reps as they can. So still zero to zero, our third turnover of the game. Second interception by Manu. And now he'll go to work, representing these Carolina Panthers. And he'll go to the air. Moss will have some room and spin to the 42. Uh, Randy Moss, still a legend, still a legend in this game. Number 84, pulling down the big catches. If maybe this is your first time tuning in over these last couple of days, get used to seeing Randy Moss, he's all over the board. A simple little hitch, corner concept right there. Cornerback plays over the top, probably in a cloud flat, so he goes underneath. We'll hand it off to Fournette. And Fournette will pick up the first down at the 32. So they say hashtag keep pounding in Carolina. And I tell you what, Nick, Fournette's a good one to do it with. Fournette's a good one to do it with. And as you've seen across the tournament, the running game is Maybe not featured by a lot of these guys, but it is certainly a huge change of pace and can keep the defense on their heels. So shotgun formation, trips tight. And he goes tr to the right side. That's Randy coming all the way across for Manu, and he'll run it again. Fournette, get off me, kids! Manu really likes leaning on Leonard Fournette as a power back. You'll see him put his head down a lot. Everybody wants to spin. Manu is all about knocking a defender down to the ground. Let's see if he chews this clock down to the two-minute warning. Second and three now. And I think you're right. I can't. He's still got his hands on the sticks. Y'all can't see it, but I can. And I think that's just for show. That's a Madden move. Because if the other guy reaches for a water bottle even, like, I'm going. That, that's the underrated part about this. These guys so used to playing online. These live events, they're playing across. You can see the emotion. You see the trash talk. A major part of this is what sort of psychological warfare you can implement. Right now, both players silent. No trash talk so far. But then again, no one scored points. It is scoreless here on second and three. And he'll throw it away. Nick, I'm confused here. I mean, there's so many Ohio State fans in the chat. Well, that's because they're great people out there. <laughs> and I, I love them. And they're awesome. A lot of people call Nick OSU Cookie Boy. You don't need a nickname. You got it already. You do need a cookie. I could, hey, I'll just call Cook. I'll call, I'll call Cook Jonathan the rest of the game. Nobody will know who in the world I'm talking about. <laughs> Nobody calls me my full name unless I'm in trouble. I don't know if you heard that chuckle. That was a don't do that. Scott, yeah, don't call was. me Jonathan. Don't it pull was. that out. I, I'll admit, third and three. 
After the two-minute warning, we've got 155 to go. We had a couple timeouts get burned here in this first Loss half. out wide on the corner. Manu continuously motions Cooper outside. Boy, he signs to check it down. He thought about that wide Ooh. route, though. You're right, Nick. He was looking. Listen, I'm not as good as any of these professional players. That could have just absolutely been a, a lurk opportunity, but it sure looked like he was open. That's a pick I might be throwing in the lobbies. So first and 10. He motions every single time, trying to make the field as wide as possible. And goes to Fournette. Whoa. And he was still alive there for a moment. Still. And there's the final timeout there by Clef. Still looked like he had a hold of the outside, cut it tight. I think the defensive tagger sort of Ran into his own man, ran into the defensive tackle. Just disaster all over. I'm with DJ and Chet, clumsing over everything. Aww. And that's not even like, that's not even my opinion anymore. When I first started broadcasting Madden, that was my opinion. Sure. But now it's just facts. <laughs> I have no comment. Can't this. argue. Can't argue no with that. On the issue. Third and inches at the six. He's been down here before, gentlemen. Now, if he gets this first down here, would we'll probably QB sneak or fullback dive. Clef has no timeouts. Manu gets ball coming out of half. So Manu could really take control of time of possession right here and kind of bore Clef out a little bit. Well, he needs a, I think he needs an inch. It's not even inches. And he's going to use a timeout of his own here. Remember, he went to the toss. He was down on the goal line. He tried a high point on second down, went to a toss on third down, fumbled. And now it's third and inches, his second time in the red zone. And he will toss it outside, and Fournette won't get there. I don't like the call. Here's the problem. Leonard Fournette, as you've seen throughout this game, he's a between-the-tackles runner who wants to fight through contact. Getting him on the edge is out of his element. You've got to get him between the tackles, lowering that head. He's going to get that six yards anyways. Mono's thinking about taking this field goal right here. He needs to think about taking this field goal because it might be first to ten. Might be I first mean, to three. Whoever gets the double digits might win 13 grand. This is a big win for Clef to hold Manu to three. But as far as he's gotten and as rough as he's played offensively. And it's up and it's good. Especially with 34 seconds left. And I believe he's going to get the kickoff to start the second half. That's a big three points. The interesting thing as a guy coming from the, the franchise side of the game watching um, not as much competitive. Man, there's been a diverse type of games. We've seen defensive struggles. We've seen Watch out for Tyreek. Big, oh, no, Tyreek. Tyreek is gone. There's no time Tyree. for talking, Nick. He's at the 30, 20, 10. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Tyreek the Freak Hill. What a jerk. Interrupted me with a kickoff return. <laughs> I don't think Clef feels bad about it. That's not me, that's Tyreek. But you see this a lot with kick returns. You'll run cross side of the field, the blocking picks up, and when you have Tyreek Hill, you don't really need to hold your blocks for too long. Boy, if you're Manu, you have played your heart out defensively in this first half. That's and with one kick, on, see ya. That's a kick in the gut, that's what that is. Mm. And check this out. You see Clef trying to pick up blockers, using defenders before he gets Tyreek Hill, and those blocks were beautiful. I mean, the score was three to nothing in the bottom of the second inning, and Clef the God just hit a home run to center field. <laughs> Let's see if Manu's got an answer back. He burned up some timeouts, so he really doesn't have much to work with here. No, he's going to be sacked up in the backfield. Probably going to take this to the end of the first half. Maybe one more run right here. You want to be. Oh, wow. What is this? What is this? Clef was oh. like, nah, bro. <laughs> uh, I don't know what he was coming out in. He just had his head in his hands. It's, it, take that offside. It's great. It's a great five yard penalty. That's the best five yard penalty <laughs> I have ever seen in the game. I wonder if he was in recent wow. plays. Maybe so. Maybe on the uh, on his on the field goal by Manu. I think you're right, Cookie Boy. So point to Cookie. And we'll go to the second half. Seven to three here at halftime. The big kick return has been the difference here in San Francisco as Clef the God has a seven to three lead. I'm with you, I do, I do like the Scullies. We'll see if Manu brings the hoodie up. I don't know, you don't want to cover up the bows. But he's going to need some offense. I mean, I, and I said it, and I meant it, Nick. The 
defense has been fantastic by Manu. And let's take a look at some of these highlights. I mean, absolutely, the defense has been phenomenal. And, and for Manu, being able to stand in these tough situations, keeping him out of the end zone. I mean, look at this pick. That's a beautiful lurk in, cross of a, in front of a crossing Tyreek Hill. We've seen Tyreek Hill have some big plays today, and you know once he gets into open space, it's bad news bears. I'll tell you what, the story right now has to be Manu's goal line offense, because that is what is preventing him from potentially having 14 points on the board. Instead, he only has three. That's a shame, because you see he's had two great user lurks. That's just bad throw. That's just bad throw. You don't need to make that one, but this is the play. I think has changed the momentum of the game. Tyreek Hill around the right side. And Scott, for, for Manu, I think the key in the second half is is just not letting that kick return get to him. You can't let that big kick get to you. Yeah, and, and knowing Manu, I, I, I don't see that happening. He's just, he, he, you got to bring your offense. You brought your defense. Now it's time to go back to the locker room. You, you forgot your offense back there. You got to bring it back out. And I believe he's going to get it first to start it. So you can go down here. You put up seven. Anything can happen. Seven to three right now at the half. That man right there represent the Carolina Panthers down by four. But this opening drive here by Manu is going to be everything. I'm wondering if Clef is going to try to run some aggressive pass rush because he did that a lot versus Sirius Mo and got away with it for the most part. I also wonder if Manu studied that. I haven't really seen too much. Oh, look at, oh yeah, he is. He is on that aggressive pass rush. All right, we're looking at the defense here of Clef the God. You saw those coaching adjustments. Let's see if we get a fake snap in there. Nothing happened. There's another. Okay. And he'll drop back. Here they come. And, oh, that was wow. a tight window. And Randy couldn't put his paws on it. That's not a phrase you hear too often. Randy couldn't put his paws on it. Seems to catch everything that comes in the area. But now second and ten, you've just got to put that play out of your mind. He's trying to split the middle of the cornerback and the safety and the cover two defense. But that was a dangerous throw. Second and ten now. One play has been the difference. The kick return. And I think Manu realized what he just did. And instead of going over the top, he goes underneath on the zig route. Needs four. Got to get to the 35-yard line. Scott Cole, Cookie, Nick from the Madden Bomber League joining you. will be here for the rest of this game, next game. And then Skimbo and RG We come back for the end of the day with IB strafing. Oh, it is picked oh, up by throw. Clef the God. Come on. Come on. He'll get a block, a kick return, and a pick six. See, I'm dead. Unbelievable. And the worst part about that was he had the seam he route, had. the tight end, splitting the safeties. Instead, he tries to check it down. And a lot of people think check down means safe, right? Their check down meant disaster. You saw exactly what I saw, Nick. A, and I think the chat saw the same thing. I know they're saying A was open, A was open. And man. Take six. Manu was playing so well in the first half. How did he end up down 14 to three? Well, let's listen into this replay here. First, you got the bad read and it's picked off. He's gonna take it all the way to the cribbo. And hey, you got a kick return. Now you got to pick six. Come on, come on, D. Let's go, man. He's feeling it, Cook. Oh yeah. Clef, he streams on Twitch a lot. So he's got a great personality on there. He's very energetic. You see that on the stage, on display, in the biggest game of his Madden career. And Shannon Sharp gets away for a moment. Still on his feet. And he'll get to the 48. I don't know if I've ever described a drag route as a resilient route. That was a resilient route and run after catch by Shannon Sharp. He's got to do something to get the momentum back. It's in plus territory. Remember, even if he kicks a field goal here, it's still a one possession game. Four minutes to go in the third. Stands tall. And Julio all the way down at the 17. University of Alabama coming down with the catch there. And now inside the red zone, everything tightens up. Can he get the touchdown that brings the momentum back to his side? That's been Manu's most effective play, throwing down the middle to Julio Jones, high pass, and he keeps on coming down with it. One more time. One more time. And there is Julio. First time I saw Julio, I want to say it was 09. 
in the Georgia Dome. Clemson was ranked ninth. Alabama was unranked. And I think Julio had 200 yards that day as a freshman, and he hauls that one in. Here's a two-point oh. conversion, and I think we false got a false start. start. I don't think you can go. On Sharp at fullback. You can't go for the two-point conversion now. Got to just take that PAT and play some defense. And it's up, and it is good. Well, he tried to make it a three-point game, but a fake hike might have cost him. And those are the little things. Uh, I'm talking with a lot of the guys, and uh, the one thing I've noticed about the, the professional players that are here is that they do the little things right. The little things have to go your way. Better watch out for Tyreek Hill again, by the way. He's coming right up the middle, and that's kickoffs. That's a little thing right there, making sure you make the sure tackle on a kickoff. Well, he's going to have it at the 30. Look at this again. Just what the doctor ordered. Now, Manu probably realized that Clef was running that aggressive pass rush. Tried to catch him off guard right there in the two-point conversion, and it bit him. This guy in chat says the game has nothing to do with the actual players. Well, yes and no, because I'm pretty sure all the ratings are based off the actual players. And there's Sharp, for example, who's really hard to tackle in real life and in Madden. <laughs> Shannon Sharp made a career out of knocking defenders down. Super Bowl champion with the Ravens and the Broncos. And now he has a pretty good day job as well. I'm going to guess he's still pretty hard to bring down. He still looks like he could kick it over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Skip Bayless even struggles to bring him down. 14 to 10. Clef with a little handoff. He'll get to the 46. He gets something going with Ricky Williams. The interesting part about this is Clef hasn't really had the ball a whole lot. Had a defensive touchdown, had a kickoff touchdown. We haven't seen the offense get going. We, have, we just haven't seen the offense get going. He hasn't scored a single point on offense. But this has been his best drive so far today. Second and nine. How about that, the low pass? That's like a throwback to last year. Instead of throwing that high pass up high, try to make that aggressive catch. Low pass, a smarter idea. Clough didn't face a fourth down in his entire first round match. By the way, guys, we're getting started 30 minutes earlier tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern time. A little bonus coverage here from San Francisco to start off the final day. It's been so awesome that we had to put 30 more minutes in it just to just to fit it all in. Big fourth down and four here. Now, if you're playing Madden Ultimate Team and you have a team of the year kicker, you might be able to kick this 57 yards out. But in salary cap, you normally don't spend your cap on a big time kicker. Most of these guys use Dan Bailey. He easily cannot make it, so Clef has to go for it. Yeah, fourth and four. Alpha, alpha. About four yards out of his range. Quick throw. It's a first down anyway. Beautiful recognition of the pressure coming off the edge. A savvy veteran throw right there. And now he's starting to feel it. The offense gets going. You convert one of these fourth downs, all of a sudden it leads to more and more conversions. I got to know who you're rooting for, chat. Not who you think is going to win. Who you who you're giving your energy to? Is it Clef or Manu? I'm sure Quest fans are in the Twitch chat, and they're going to be representing their boy. Quick throw, no. He's sacked up, and let's take a look at the replay here, brought to you by Snickers when you're off your game, when you're hungry. He just stacked the box right there, and Manu has been trying to stack the box, try to give these looks, and it seems to be bothering Clef a little bit. Here it comes again. And Sharp, I can speak from personal experience, you are off your game and you're hungry. <laughs> Eat a Snickers, seriously. I'm hungry a lot. I'm hungry right now. Third down and 18 here. The least you can do is try to get a couple yards, get a field goal here. So if you get maybe a five yard drag route, not the worst thing in the world. Third and 18 for Clef. He's really trying to mess with Manu right now. Flip, flip, flip. He's on the edge of field goal range here. Needs a little bit. He's chased away. He's just going to have to throw it away. And here comes fourth and 18. It's never good when you see your quarterback's back facing where you're supposed to be throwing the ball. We've seen that a couple times today where quarterback gets in trouble. Just trying to make ah. something happen. He does have the win with him for Dan Bailey. Kicks it perfect. It's up and it is good. Let's not underestimate how tough of a kick that is. 55-yarder with Dan Bailey on the all Madden kicking meter. We saw a couple players miss field goals, so that was pretty clutch. 
Big shout out to Tizo throwing some positivity in the chat. First and 10 at the 25. Got a seven point ball game here. Remember he scored on his last drive. It was a post route to Julio Jones. He needs more of that with 104 to go. Got to keep pounding here, Manu. We'll see a Clef watch Julio Jones as we start off. But a big running play here and a big, big. hit. Those hurt. Those hurt. Leonard Fournette. He's really making an established effort to try to get Fournette going. It's been a nice change of pace. He just hasn't closed out these drives. Second and six. Under a minute to go now in the third. Ball to 29. Trying to answer. And he overthrew him. Wow, wow, wow. Have you met Michael Vick? <laughs> that was not only an overthrow, but almost an interception right there. He tried to go back to the Julio Jones high pass right there, and Clef is starting to make adjustments. Manu is going to have to try to stay one step ahead, maybe put Julio Jones on a corner route here. Here's the motion by Moss. Manu. Throwing and a nice find. I know that's the check down, but that's exactly what he needed. It's just multiple reads. You go through your progression. All these guys, they have three or four routes that they can throw. And right there, A wasn't there, B wasn't there. So let's take Sharp underneath, pick up the first down. Mono's been very patient so far today. Clef, meanwhile, playing a bend but don't break defense that has been paying off. He's kind of just enjoying Manu checking it down almost. Pally boy in the chat, love you too, buddy. We got 12 seconds to go. Scott Cole, Cookie, Nick from the Madden Bomber League, which is an incredible connected franchise community, which is my world as well. He needs four yards here, but put them up. Put your fours in the chat, folks. I'm gonna put my Snickers down. I'm putting my fours up. We got five minutes to see who's gonna be moving on to face the defending champion. Goes Madden, representing the Washington Redskins in a seven-point ball game. And man, who's working this clock, Nick? Working the clock five minutes away from a win. Also, a little bit of money going into this next round. Trying to get that 20K. Uh, if you haven't, I mean, I've never felt the pressure playing for that, some, that much money, but you got to think these guys are feeling a little bit. And overthrow. Something, something, Mike Vick. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that... That route, he just cannot throw that. It is not open. I know he thinks cover two defense. Let's try to split the seam right there. It's not open. In real life, that's a great read. In Madden, that's a way to throw a pick. He's just too much talent on the back end of that. That time he high points it, which is what he was trying to do on the last pass. Vic just sometimes sails it first and 10. Sometimes he sails it, sometimes it works. At the end of the day, you just got to make sure the times that he doesn't complete it, it's not ending up in the hands of the defense. Well, he's got confidence in that route. There's no doubt about it. There's a reason why I'm here and Manu is there. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to back you up, Cookie, and I failed. I'll tell you what, that route's more Oh, oh my. Come on. Go, man. Ron Parker. How about that? Two interceptions underneath. And for Manu, every single drive he's had seems to be spoiled by some sort of mistake. And that's where I go back to Clef playing, playing a bend but don't break defense. You give him these underneath routes, but once you take it away that one time, once you fall in love with it, that's a big play, big interception. And now for Clef, let's see if we can take away a little bit of clock. But more importantly, make this a two-possession game. I don't know if you guys heard Manu, but he said, man, I'm trying to high point that. And he threw it right to the chest. First and 10 for Clef. He might be able to put this game in the fridge. It's a brutal way for this game to turn it. The interesting thing I'm looking at Clef is, in his first game against Mo, an offensive battle, 390 yards through the air, 12.1 per attempt. It was nonstop offense. This game it has been led by defense and special teams. I know Clef is not going to be happy about the way he's playing this game offensively, but defensively, defense wins championships. So he's got to hang his head on that. Four minutes to go, second and 10, and that's how you high point it. <laughs> oh man, I believe that was Randy Moss right there. If you're gonna high point to anyone, Randy Moss might as well be the guy. Third down and four here. Manu needs this, this is his tournament life on the line, a trip to the round of eight. Both of these two got dropped in the round of 16 in the classic, so someone is going to make it further than they ever have in their MCS career. 
we, we, I, I, I got to talk to the Mutt content creators here. We got to find something that stops the high point to Randy Moss. Can we get a gassed up Anthony Barr somewhere? Can I get an out of position Calvin at 99 or something? Just when the high point starts working, just when you see the check downs, you see a third and four, a little bit of a press up by uh, by Manu in that defense. And just like that, stretch it over the top. And now at the 28 yard line, 310 and counting. You don't want to ever count anyone out, but at this point it's looking like it's going to be tough to come back. I love the way Clef is using Randy Moss as a chess piece, constantly moving around the field, all sorts of different route combinations. We literally just saw him on a hitch. Now he runs the corner route, and it looks like he's going to just get the snap off. Yeah, there's Ricky Williams, and he'll get to the 20-yard line. Four carries for five yards. We got one more play here until the two-minute warning unless Manu uses his timeouts, which he probably should after this next play. So he needs two yards to get a new set of downs. He's right there on the door of the red zone, right at the 20-yard line with 2.30 to go. If I'm Clef, I'm just going to run this ball every single time. But I'm not Clef. And he will run it, and he'll shoot the gap. Boom. <laughs> you know what, Clef? Don't do what I'm doing, all right? <laughs> Don't do what I'm doing. Stick to you. And actually, in third down, six situation right here. You don't want to get too conservative and run the ball right here. You try to pass the ball. Manu's probably going to use a timeout anyways. Manu probably should use a timeout here as so we can go to the two-minute warning. But more than anything else, you just want to get this first down, whichever way you feel most comfortable doing. And we all know how good of a passer Clef is. So, you know, as much as you want to think situational football, you know, sometimes passing the ball is actually a better option. Well, it's a two-minute warning. And if you guys don't know about Twitch drops, you guys can connect your account on Twitch so you can get... Packs, all kind of cool stuff. Drops are enabled, so make sure you got your account connected so you can get those Twitch drops. And there goes Michael Vick running all the way down to the 14-yard line. Cerebral play right there. I love using that word, cerebral. Using the old noggin, the brain. You got a thesaurus down there? I do What's a little going bit. on down there, Vic? I just like breaking out the big words, making me seem a little smarter than I actually am. That hurts for Manu. He had some great user defense on the left side of the field, but Michael Vick, that is why you spend the calf on Michael Vick. And there is Ricky Run, Ricky Run, all the way to the five-yard line, and Manu has to use his second timeout with one yard to go. Ricky Williams, hook him, horns, the Texas. Man, it's... It's been a while since I've seen Ricky Williams. I grew up watching Ricky Williams on national TV, and now I get to watch him on the virtual field. Oh, Mike Dicka moved up with the New Orleans Saints to draft him. No one could question the talent of Ricky Williams. If he would have hung around the game a little bit more, he might have been one of the top running backs of all time. Obviously in Madden, he's fantastic. Second and one, going outside with a toss. Doesn't get the block. And a nice job there by Manu trying to hold the door here. Both of these teams have done a great job inside the goal line defending that toss play, uh, making sure that edge gets sealed so you can't get to the outside. I'll be interested to see if there's maybe a little bit of change in the strategy start to move between the tackles, maybe even throw the ball down here because a touchdown here could seal it. Well, third and six here. 144 to go. Passing. Manu needs a miracle. And Vic, Vic's still running. Heads up play and there. That might do it. Heads up play there to slide down with Michael Vick. Don't try to score that touchdown. Get down and shoot this clock down. Manu takes the headset off, puts a controller down. And there's no reason to run up the score. It's single elimination. You're not in group play. You're not trying to make a statement here. There's a lot of respect. And he's in the victory formation for Clef. He's soaking it in right now. He doesn't want to get up and dap it up. He is soaking it in over on the left side of that screen before he bends the knee right here. But Clef the God is going to be moving on to face goes Madden. And, and, you know, of course it's disappointing losing. Of course you want to get that belt, that 100K. But at the end of the day, you're one of the top 16 players in this tournament, and you live to fight another day. There are plenty more opportunities, and we know we're going to see Mono again. Now, for Clef, meanwhile... People regard him as one of, if not the favorite, to win this tournament from here on out, advancing to the round of eight. And defensively, he really stood tall. And that's scary because everybody regards him as one of the best offensive players. If he can put offense and defense together in his next game, boy, oh boy. Well, here he comes over here to hang out with us. Clef the God, 
huge on Twitch, and now all of a sudden he's huge on Madden here in the MCS. Uh, this is what we get. I mean, you won like 20 grand, but I also have Snickers over here, so don't eat it because Goes ate it. The interview was <laughs> terrible, so just save that. Put it in your pocket maybe for later. But, hey, back and forth, how big was that kick return? It was huge because I was I was boxed. He played good defense. I played terrible offense. Probably the worst Madden game I played in, in a long time. So, for me to win that, it gives me a lot of confidence because when you win at your worst, it gives you confidence. If you if I play good, I can I can I can run the table. Clef, for the people out there that maybe you know play Madden casually, how tough is it when you know you're not playing your A game to stay within yourself and make sure that you fight hard each and every time, even when you maybe don't have your best stuff? Right. It's it's super tough. It's super tough. But it just goes back to it's just the mentality you have to have. It it, it starts with life. You just got to understand things not always gonna go my way. It's not always going to be daisies and flowers, so you just got to know how to fight through that adversity. Let's check out some of these highlights here. And one question I want to ask you as these highlights run is I want to know how much is your Twitch experience? How much does that help you on the big stage? Oh, it helps a lot. It helps a lot. I've gotten a lot of people who follow me on Twitch. And when I come up here, I mean, it's, it's a little different, but not too much. Once I relax and get in the zone, it feels just like I'm streaming. Well, that was a huge pick right there. We talked about the kick return, but then a pick six, Clef? Come on now. I needed it. I needed all it. Kick return was huge, but that pick by Ron Parker made two big plays. Yeah, low cap, making big plays. That's what salary cap's all about, man, finding those gems and then making, hey, defending champ next. It's also a $20,000 game of Madden. Right. That can bring you up to forty grand for just coming out to California and kicking it. Uh, what's your thoughts playing the champ? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Ghost, I'm, I'm about 20, 25 and over as Ghost in my career, so this, this, this going to be fun. I know it's a mental hurdle he's going to have to get past, but I'm standing in the way. I'm standing in the way. I'm going to be ready. I know he's going to be ready, too, so we'll see. It should be fun. Well, as that smile it goes, he's ready, too. Yeah, that's going to be a great matchup there in the NFC. Let's actually go to Rico.